This one's going to be a bit uh, fiery. I don't mean just because of the passion of the fans. There's probably going to be a lot of pyrotechnics at this game. Do you know what I'm saying? It's going to look like bonfire night. It's going to look like the closing scene in um, V for Vendetta. That's exactly what it's going to be like tomorrow. I bet you. You saw that what happened with Olympiakos and the Pathanaikos game, in which it had to be abandoned because of the crowd trouble. Well, that's going to give you an insight into our opponents, isn't it? But I'm here to give you a little bit more than that. I'm just going to tell you about that, this team, and what you can expect from the players. And actually, you might recognise some of the names that have played and continue to play for Olympiakos. This is a game that has excited a lot of West Ham fans, not at least because it's in a popular country for tourists, but it's also one that was very easily accessible to get to. Athens is a place where you can get direct flights to from London. And I know a lot of people have flown out there already. With me living in a completely different part of the world, it's even more expensive. And I'm gonna keep saying this. But anyone who goes to these games and can afford to do it cheaply, I'm pleased for you, but I envy you. But I don't regret moving to Canada because the UK is a shit tip. So I suppose that's one of the things I have to contend with. Pay more money and go and see West Ham in Europe or don't bother at all and live in the UK. I think I'll choose the first option. West Ham players and staff have already flown out to Greece to prepare for the game tomorrow, starting training and settling into the surroundings. It's going to be a good game for Dinos Mavropanos because this is being played in his home country of Greece. And I'm sure he's very excited for it. He was excited to play in Germany because he made a career for himself there. He's also happy to return to his homeland. So he's going to be really happy. Oh yeah. And he's probably going to be starting as well. So that's a perk. One thing that I can say about Olympiakos is that its defensive record in the Greek League is excellent. It's kept five clean sheets this season and only conceded two goals. That's going to tell you exactly how resolute this team is at defending. It's also one of the most popular teams in Greece. It's always a title contender, and at the time of recording this, it's top of the Greek League. Manager Diego Martinez has been a very popular appointment with the fans. They really love and warm to his uh, style of play. And in the last game, Olympiakos beat PAS 3-0. PAS is the team that Mavropanos used to play for before Arsenal signed him in early 2018. When we're talking about this team we, that we're playing against, we've got to talk about the fact that they're not even underdogs at all because they are accustomed to playing in Europe. Mainly the Champions League, though. They have played in that several times. They faced a lot of English opposition during that time. We are not going to have to take these lightly. The crowd will make it tough for us. They're... Players will make it tough. This is hard. No game in Europe is ever easy for us, and we don't do ourselves a lot of favours, but this is a hard one. It really, really will be intimidating to play this lot. At least two of these names ring a bell. Stefan Jovetic, who used to play for Manchester City, and Daniel Pedenza, who recently played for Wolves. I believe Pedenza scored against West Ham in the Premier League, didn't he? That name definitely rings a bell. Jao Carvalho also used to play for Nottingham Forest, as did Julian Biancon. So they actually do have a connection with Forest, do Olympiacos, because the owner owns both teams. So that's probably why they have all of these players coming in and out from this club. Um, other names that ring a bell are Vicente Ibora. I remember him playing in La Liga. Um, who else? Costas Fortunis. That name rings a bell as well. 
But I also have some very good attackers as well. Ayub El Kabi is currently leading the team in goals this season. And Youssef El Arabi is also another player who is leading the way for them in terms of his leadership abilities. El Kabi and El Arabi are both Moroccan and will definitely know Naya Fagird. It might just be a big reunion for him, but it always seems to be when we play in Europe. I guarantee someone knows someone every time we go abroad. Maybe with the exception of the Serbian team, but that's how it's going now with West Ham. Arthur Masuaku signed to West Ham from Olympiakos in 2016 in a transfer that caught Slavon Bilic out of the blue. He didn't even know the player had signed until he turned up at the stadium before a game. Masuaku spent a total of six years at West Ham, scoring one goal in a 3-2 win over Chelsea, in which a fluke effort went past Edward Mendy. He had his up days, his ups, his downs, his good days, his bad days with us. Spent quite a long time at the club, if you think about it. And he now plays for Besiktas in the Turkish Super League. I'm going to say a 1-1 draw because it's going to be a hard game. I really think it will be. The changes to our, will be made and we'll have our regular Europa League team out. But seriously, it's going to be a tough game, man. And uh, a draw is the only real result I can see us getting out of this. Um, gritty, hardworking, but difficult. That's what we're going to have to contend with.